Hello and welcome to 12 lead interpretation, bundle branch blocks and PEMI blocks. Now we talk about our two bundle branch blocks. We know that there are two bundles, a right and a left. Each one of them will have different criteria. A left bundle branch will have a QRS duration of over 120 milliseconds, a dominant S wave in V1, a broad monophasic R wave in your lateral leads, and a prolonged R peak time of more than 60 milliseconds in V5 and V6. A right bundle branch block will have a QRS duration over 120 milliseconds. It will also have a RSR prime in V1 to V3. It will have a slurred S wave in your lateral leads. Now this sounds complex, but I do have technique to make it easier. So don't be overwhelmed by all the numbers. So just like with our axes, all the numbers and all the stuff is kind of overwhelming. So here's a down and dirty easy way of learning your bundle branch blocks. So we're gonna be talking about turn signals. Now, if you're one of those awesome people who use it, this should be super easy. If you're one of those who don't know what I'm even talking about, it will be the stick to the left of your steering wheel. Now, think about this. When you want to turn left, which way do you pull your turn signal or your blinker? You pull the stick down. So a left bundle branch block will have a negative QRS in V1 and it's gonna be wide. The number one place you're gonna look for your bundles is gonna be in V1. If they're wide, you look to see is it up or down. If I'm trying to turn left into a Dunkin' Donuts, I'm gonna put my turn signal down so my left bundle branch is gonna be wide and down in V1. So here's a 12 lead of your typical left bundle branch block. Remember, we're gonna look at V1 and we're gonna notice that it's a wide QRS complex and down in V1 with a left bundle branch block, you're gonna have something called appropriate discordance. Essentially, if my QRS is going down, my ST segment and my T wave is going to be going the opposite direction, so up. That's why in V1 the QRS is down and you're gonna have ST elevation and your T wave is also going to be up. If I look over at lead two, you're gonna notice that the QRS is up and I'm gonna have some ST depression and my T wave is going to be down. This is gonna be completely normal. When we go into further advanced topics, we're gonna to talk about the modified Scarbosa criteria and determining if a patient has a STEMI or a heart attack with a left bundle branch block. Okay, same thing with your right bundle branch block. If you wanna turn right, lift the turn signal up. So the QRS complex in the right bundle branch will be up. So once again, look in V1, is it wide? Yes, okay, is it up or down? If it's up, it's a right bundle branch block. If it's down, it's gonna be a left bundle branch block. So here's an example of a right bundle branch block on a 12 lead. If I look over in V1, I'm gonna see a wide QRS and I'm gonna notice that the QRS is mostly pointing up. So this is gonna be your right bundle branch block morphology. If you look over in the limb lead, you're gonna notice that we do have a left tier fascicular block. So now we will talk about some hemi blocks. These are blocks in your fascicles that branch off from your left bundle branch. You're gonna have a left anterior fascicular block or a left posterior fascicular block. Now, the left anterior fascicular block is more common. You're gonna have a left X deviation, a small Q wave followed by a prominent R wave in lead one in AVL, and a small R and a big S wave in your inferior leads, which are two, three in AVF. For the posterior fascicular block, you will have a right X deviation, a small R, big S in lead one in AVL, and a small Q, large R in your inferior leads. So here's your left anterior fascicular block. We have three criteria. First off, do you have left axis deviation? You need to pause it at this point just to see if you can figure it out on your own. So we got a thumbs up. Lead one is your left thumb, right thumb is AVF. So I'm gonna put my left thumb up because one is up and AVF is down. So I'm gonna put my right thumb down. My thumbs have left each other. So left axis deviation. Now, do you see small Q and big R waves in lead one in AVL? I do, so yes. The Q wave is more noticeable in AVL. You can see that very small deflection right before the prominent R wave. And finally, do we have a small R and a big S in our inferior leads? So two, three AVF are our inferior leads. So I'm looking for a small little upstroke at the very beginning of the QRS, and then it should be mostly down. And yes, I see that in two, three, and AVF. Now we get into our left posterior fascicular block. Do we see right axis deviation? I do. One is down, AVF is up, our thumbs are heading right towards each other. So, right axis deviation. Do you see a small R and a large S and one in AVL? Well, I see a little blip as a positive R wave and one in AVL and a dominant S wave, so yes. Do I have a very small Q wave in our, my inferior leads with a dominant R wave? Yes, I do. So that's your left posterior fascicular block.
Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this breakdown, don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment below with your thoughts or questions. Stay tuned for more EKG cases and clinical tips, and I'll see you guys next time.